Okay, what questions would you like to continue with? Um, can I just say something, Adrian? I need a microphone because I can talk pretty loud. Well, we don't hear, the, we're recording at all, so it'd be lovely to, <laughs> lovely to hear. Um, I'm starting to understand what you're saying about uh, the spirit world and how that was more than likely a spirit that was sort of guiding me and manipulating me. Yep. Right? But yep. Um, I'm thankful for what that spirit's done. Of course. And, and showing me um, the ways of, of, of healing and understanding humanity and, and all these things. All, all the law of attractions with spirits are always going to teach you something. It doesn't matter. Um, even, even in the darkest of spirits who influence us will be there to teach us something. Yeah. So, so my feelings towards spirits are very much of appreciation towards mm. every attraction. Yeah. So don't feel that uh, from myself there's any judgment about any interaction with spirits. I feel yep. quite strongly that actually every interaction with a spirit is beneficial to us. Yes. And I feel, in fact, that we shouldn't attempt to prevent them. We need to instead understand them yes yeah i thoroughly agree yeah yep i agree yep. yeah a lot, a lot of times people ask me questions about oh how can i stop this spirit from being with me and how can and i'm going well no no you don't need to stop the spirit being with you you need to that like, the spirit being with you whoever whoever they are and whatever condition they're in is there to help you work through something emotionally help you learn something and it's just the law of attraction perfectly in operation and if we can appreciate that and understand what it is and learn from that process there's so many things we can learn so uh, i feel there's no reason to fear spirits and if you look at the bible record in the first century i never feared spirits in the first century either you know i always interacted with them and in every single case people around or the individuals involved all learnt something and so yeah i feel and i feel actually in our discussion that actually the spirits with you have also learnt something in that in that process yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, be friends with the spirits and yeah be friendly with your fears too yeah exactly it's yeah. like um my feelings are is that every spirit is just as much a child of god as yeah. i am and there's no need to fear them no matter what condition they're in mm. but but we do need to understand what's going on better than we do on earth you know a lot of times because we can't see what's going on we then make a lot of assumptions about what's going on that are not true and that's what damages us more than anything mm. when we when we do see what's going on then it's wonderful like we can learn so many things um, and uh, like even with your spirit friend who's been doing this with you my suggestion is to keep engaging with him mm. and talk to him about what he feels you know what does he feel about you know all of these different things and where he leads you and I gave him a bit of a hard time because <laughs> um, I went against the uh, free will thing yeah you know what I mean so yeah. <clears throat> I played quite a few games with the spirit yeah yeah and I went very nice in certain areas because I'd say if you do this for me I'll do what you want me so to like do. A, like a bribery barter yeah, yeah. system and almost. then and then it'd be done and I'd go Ah, oh, no, I don't think so. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah, but that went on for quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he, he would even know, he would probably even know enough about you to know that you potentially would do that too, you know? So Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. so that's the beauty of interacting with them is that you can actually, you know, learn a lot through the interaction about yourself and about your own compromise of truth, but also about the spirit and what he does and why he does it. And in the end, both can progress. And in fact... Yeah. The reason why God allows um, all of this law of attraction to occur with spirits is so that both spirits and humans can learn from the interactions. Yep. In, the, in the future, um, there'll be far more people who can see spirits just like we see each other. There'll be far more people who can speak to spirits just like we're speaking together now. And in, in the future, it's not going to be such a, you know, a thing that's looked down upon or ostracised or criticised as it is nowadays a lot. So... My feelings are the more that we engage the process, the faster we'll learn, and this integration between the spirit world and the earth will occur fa faster as well. Have, uh, have you heard of um, healing through uh, colours, shapes and patterns? C certainly. Yeah. Every colour. Um, and somebody was going to ask me some questions about the spirit body. So if we just talk about it for a bit. Imagine that's your soul and this is your body. 
but uh, perhaps you, your head's not quite that big in proportion to the rest of it. <laughs> and, and so that's your physical body. And then your spirit body is pretty much identically overlaid over your material body most of the time, except when you go to sleep. So when you go to sleep, you go out of body. But that's in your wake state, pretty much how you look. And hopefully, like I said, the brain is a bit smaller, perhaps. But in that in that what happens is that of course you've got these intersecting energy points you're the um, if you can liken it to there's a center the soul is the center burst of energy that controls what happens to these bodies and controls this protective layer around the bodies as well now your soul um, ha have you ever seen a um, some pictures about some galaxies, that, well, pulsars in the in in the universe. Like they have a double toy, toroid system, where they have an energy field coming out from a central location, as sort of like two donuts. There's one donut. This is drawn on the side, and another donut sort of thing. And there's energy that's flowing constantly between the pulsars. Well, our body around our body is very very similar, and. What actually happens is that there's this flow of constant flow of energy and this constant flow of energy that's going around our bodies creates intersecting points and the intersecting points are where there's high densities of energy and they're called chakras. Does that make sense to everyone? So, and we've got different chakras and you know, the, the truth is that they're the chakras in our body change as we progress in love. So um, up until quite recently, there was a belief there was only seven chakras. And the seven chakras corresponded to the dimensional existence of the sixth dimension. But beyond there, the, the other chakras begin developing because the energy system of this thyroid system changes. And as a result, the intersecting points change and we have more chakras. But, but imagine for a moment we've got the seven. So, so we've got one, two, what is it? Three, heart, four, throat, five, um, <laughs> a bit out of scale, but uh, and then there's crown chakra, right? And we also have them um, protruding out of the rear of our body as well as the front, of course. So uh, many of you would have done some pendulum work, maybe, and you drop, put a pendulum over a body, and it starts rotating. Have any of you tried doing that? Yeah. Um, that's demonstrating that the energy is flowing in a certain direction. Obviously, if it's flowing in one direction, it's working well. And if it's flowing in the other direction, not so well. But um, you've got, say, those primary seven chakras where you can put the pendulum over and you'll see the pendulum swing and you'll see the energy move by seeing the pendulum move. But we also have the same occurring in the rear, which is also related to our intention. So the front, coming out of the front of our body is related to our actual state. Coming out of the rear of our body is related to our intention. So, you know, what do we intend to do? So this is how spirits can even see what you intend to do, not just what you're doing. Because they, they can actually see the energy flowing in different areas. Now, this energy flow which is flowing through your entire system with all these intersecting points. I think there's uh, around, I think from memory, about 192 or something intersecting points for each chakra or something like that. I can't remember the exact number. Um, but um, those intersecting points create um, high fields of energy which create vortexes flowing into your body which can, you know, cause us to have interactions with others. Now. If you turn it on your side, so imagine this is your body on its side. <laughs> I'm not very good at drawing like this. So here's your arms, right, and, and your legs on, uh, on the side, right? And, sorry about that. But uh, if we have the corresponding points, right, just uh, five, six, seven, ten, something like that. Um, if you could see, there are actually energy points coming out and in like so, right? Now, the reason why that happens is actually all related to the soul. And actually the soul's emotions and the soul's condition drives even these energy points. So, you know when you're doing healing, 
when you're doing healing of the spirit body which does definitely help the spirit body to heal what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to help these energy systems of the spirit body to move now often we have other spirits connected to certain energy points based on different emotions that we have which are harming the flow of that particular energy point right? and we also have and more importantly we have a heap of emotions from our soul remember our this is all happening within the container of the soul all affecting the different points so for example if I have huge amount of grief in me that I've never experienced I've just suppressed it pushed it down I tried to stay away from it all my life what happens is the heart chakra the, the fourth, fourth chakra there gets heavily suppressed in other words it, it won't be working very well it will it will actually in some places completely cease in operation it will just feel like it's all just blocked up and you'll start getting you know this is where a lot of heart attacks come from even just this whole area completely blocked up with sadness driving the, the heart attack now the soul is affecting the spirit body's chakra point so it stops it from having an energy flow in the right direction and then that affects the physical body's organs so when you do your healing and stuff you're actually healing in most cases you're attempting to heal the spirit body right and the spirit body is actually the changes to the spirit body heals the physical body automatically the truth is that when you heal the soul then everything will be healed without you having to do any work at all on the bodies does that make sense to everyone yeah, yeah. so so um if you can think of your entire system like your soul has total control over everything else so what I've often seen is a person lays down on a table a person work another person a healer works on their spirit body clearing all of the things on their spirit body the person gets up walks down the street comes back sighs on the table and they had exactly the same thing that they started with before the person started healing them and the reason why is because the soul emotion which drove the condition of the spirit body hasn't been healed and so it, it will continue to do the same thing do you think that it's possible that someone can heal the soul definitely that's what this what yeah everything that we myself and Mary is speaking about is about healing the soul because that's what I used to do when yep. I did healing on people it wasn't just fix up the problem it was totally remove sadness whatever within them yep heal whatever needed healing and yep re-put however can I make a few provisos in what I've said I sure. do believe that but I but I actually feel that the only way to permanently heal the soul is for the soul to experience the emotions that are denied so in other words if I have a huge amount of block sadness in my in my chest region that comes from my soul sadness about probably it's going to be if it's in my chest probably about relationships and love and if I've got all this block sadness about relationships and love in my chest region the only thing in the end that's going to permanently cure that in the soul is not somebody actually removing it but actually me experiencing it for myself but, but wouldn't you think they're experiencing it by feeling the pain that they feel um in the physical pain you mean or the spiritual no, pain? the physical pain the and the spiritual pain and the emotional pain that oh. they're feeling from carrying it around yeah that's the result of the suppression of it <clears throat> my feelings are that when they actually feel it uh, which means like let's say i had all that grief I would actually cry out that grief mm. and I can be assisted to do that you know somebody who helps me spiritually can help me do that mm. and as long as I can be assisted to feel that grief then I have a chance to heal mm. but if, if I'm not going to choose to personally feel that grief then I'm already shutting down the ability of anybody to help me heal mm. yeah so Mary you wanted to um, if we can just um. need to say it in the mic down I was just going to say that once we have that willingness to feel that that grief, say yep. for example, then God can actually assist a healer yeah. 
as long as that willingness exists within us, so we have the, uh, we would refer to it as humility, like we would have the willingness to experience whatever it is, if we're in that really open, willing state, then God can actually act and lessen that pain and sort of take it from us, mm. but we have to be in the right state of faith and openness first. To feel Does it. Does that so, make sense? So if yeah. a person is shut down to feeling it and then they come along to you and say, can you help me please feel it, but really they don't want to feel it, then they're not going to finish up healing. But if they're in an open state going, I want to feel this, I want to actually get through this emotion, th at that point God has a lot of ability then to, through, even through another person, to actually help the person heal. Yeah. Would it also be dependent on the, he the so-called healer themselves, whether their intention is to feel powerful or to feel... Very much so. Yeah. Yep. If, the, if the healer has the wrong motive then certainly that's going to have a huge effect on the actual process and whether it's actually going to happen. In fact, what I notice a lot, when I've been to some of these, uh, it's interesting going to the, you know those, what are they called, the psychic fairs? Have you been, uh, sorry, like body, mind and soul fairs and stuff like that. I've been to quite a few of them now and, um, and um, Oh, just one reason why I'm having difficulty speaking today is because my mind is probably elsewhere actually <laughs> can it so I'll just apologize for that um, there's so much at the moment so much stuff bombarding myself and Mary that I'm just feeling the like literally millions of people at the moment projecting stuff at us um, and I'm finding it difficult to stay connected with myself while I'm feeling all of those things so I'm sorry about that but um, yeah, with the body, mind and soul fears, I've often seen a person doing some healing, so-called healing, but the reality is the person is actually taking from the person they are saying they're healing. Um, so, and I've, seen, I've even seen people actually sexually interacting with the person through the process and all sorts of issues. And the reason why that occurs is because when we have an emotional injury in a certain area of our soul which affects a certain area in our spirit body so for example if we have some emotional injuries with regard to feelings of worth that will affect uh, very much affect our second chakra area so down there so when we have an injury regarding it that's not healed it, already we've got a feeling if you like coming out of us which allows a person who has a corresponding injury not the same injury but an injury that's sympathetic to actually have their energy enter us and this is how addictive relationships occur if if for example if i'm a needy man who needs a woman's approval and i'm willing to do anything it takes to get the woman's approval I'm going to need, for another, for, to be attracted to a woman, I'm going to need a woman who's in a bossy, who's bossy of men, but who's willing to give me her sexual approval as long as she's allowed to dominate me. Does that make sense? So in other words, i am got this injury coming out of me going, I'm not feeling very good about myself as a man, I need a woman to dominate me, but I also, but I feel needy for her to, to approve of me. And she's got an injury that corresponds in, the, in a sympathetic manner. And the, her injury is, I want to dominate the man because I don't feel safe in a relationship unless I'm dominating the man. And so she will, she will project at it. Now, those two people will feel sexually attracted to each other. Right? Because of their sympathetic injury causing them to bind together. Now... Unfortunately, a lot of attractions on earth is if, if two or more of these chakra points are open in a sympathetic manner, in other words, they're codependent addictively, then there's a high likelihood we'll have a relationship with the person. Does that make sense? Relationship with what, sorry? With the person. So, so if I've got two points here that correspond to a sympathetic interaction with two points in the woman then there's a high likelihood that we will finish up being together sexually and having a relationship. Be yeah, but been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> Not going back again. Not going back there again, no. <laughs> anyway. and, and the more of these points that are open in a codependent manner, the higher the likelihood is that that relationship will be even more binding. What about learning acceptance of others, though? 
Um, this is not, I'm not talking about acceptance of others, I'm talking about attractions. Acceptance? But is it the, yeah, but when you, you start out with the attraction, but as I said, I had an opposite, um, and all it was is really me fearing myself. Mm -hmm. So I learned to accept him for who he is, and he's, you know, really funny and all the rest of it, because they're all the things I worried about myself to do with. Mm -hmm. When I learned to accept him, I stopped being angry. Yeah, I, and, I put to you that it's not about accepting him that caused you to stop being angry. Well, yeah, well, because when I accepted him for his bits and pieces, I was actually accepting myself. Yeah, so it's a lot more complicated what's, what's been happening between the two of you than that, I believe. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel, uh, see, see, what happens with a lot of people is that there is this, uh, see, the problem with a lot of the new age type philosophies is that they sort of teach us that we can intellectually jump over an emotional condition. They sort of teach us that we can, you know, intellectualize ourselves over the top of what's really happening emotionally. Yeah. And the problem with a lot of new age philosophy is it does do, attempt to do that. It attempts to intellectualize something that's actually a little bit more complicated that's going on emotionally that we want to deny. Th does that make sense? Well, and, and what about when it's first uh, you need the microphone back again. Sorry. <laughs> what about when it's love at first sight? So where does that come into it? I put to you love at first sight generally only occurs under uh, on the earth under three possible conditions the first possible condition is that you're soulmates and you recognize each other instantly now that's very unlikely most for most of us the main reason why is because we have huge injuries with the opposite sex or the opposite gender and so it's very very hard for us to to actually understand who our soulmate is because of our intergender emotional injuries but that's possible the second possibility is that we both have corresponding emotional injuries that are attracted to each other to be to be looked after so if i've got an injury that i need looking after and you have one that you need looking after and it happens to be one that corresponds then automatically there'll be an attraction right the third possible uh, possible thing that happens and happens very frequently is that spirits this spirit up here you know who's a guy likes that girl down here and he's with you, you yep. and so he causes you to be attracted to that person does that make sense or male or female depends you know it just depends on who it is and very frequently spirits who are with us in interact with us in such a way that they influence our attractions and i've seen i've seen an entire attraction just totally driven by two spirits and the people on earth, once they realised it, they realised they weren't attracted to each other at all. Well, how do you find that out? How do you find it out? Well, it's only by... It, it, the attractions are one of those three things. My feelings are, if you work your way through the emotional injuries regarding the other gender, so for, if I could point out some of yours, you, have, um, you want the male to make you feel safe and secure. You're, um, you, you want him to be stronger than you if possible but on the other hand you want to be able to control him probably probably <laughs> you need to talk to the microphone <laughs> i want to be able to control myself you want to be in control yeah. of yourself yeah and and, it, and giving your heart in vulnerability to somebody else is going to be automatically an out of control condition that's right which you don't like no <laughs> so, does that make sense yeah. so you want to be in control of the relationship now a male who's willing to satisfy all of those conditions will be attracted to you all right yeah. now so my suggestion is if we work through as an individual if we work through the our own personal injuries with the opposite gender and our injuries towards our self which is the injuries we have towards the same gender if you like so to give you an example of this let's say i have a set of injuries in, in my personal case I had a set of injuries with my dad that that actually tell me about myself and then I have a set of injuries with my mum that actually interact with the opposite gender and if I heal both of those two sets of injuries then I will be open to actually seeing my soulmate for the very first time even if I'm living with them I will not see my soulmate until I open those two particular injuries before 
at that time, we are in a codependent, addictive relationship of some kind, some sort. Oh, okay. And it's only when we heal those particular intergender emotional injuries. So if I have anger with the man or anger with the woman, if I'm a man and I'm angry with the woman, then straight away I'm blocked to my soulmate if she's a woman. And if I'm a woman and I have anger with the man, straight away I'm black to my soulmate if he's a man. If I'm a woman and I'm angry with women, then straight away I'm blocked to parts of myself, my own femininity. And if I'm a man, I'm angry with my father, I'm angry with a man, then I'll be blocked to my own masculinity. And if I'm blocked in any one of those four areas, I will not be able to easily recognise a soulmate relationship. And it's a high likelihood that I'm in a codependent addictive relationship if I'm blocked in one of those four areas. If I unblock all of those four areas, I now have the ability to actually find my soulmate for a start. In fact, not only find, when I say find, you don't even have to look. Your soulmate will automatically be attracted to you. Uh, because the attraction of the two halves of the soul is one of the most powerful attractions in the universe so it will automatically occur and then and then not only that I will now be able to develop the soulmate relationship because I am open to the opposite gender and to myself what about forgiveness in yourself uh, like if you go through your steps of having sat down and thought about a relationship with a particular person and how it was and how you felt and how they made you feel and all the rest of it and then ceremonially you might write it down as well and then you say I forgive them even though you don't say it to their face and then you say that you forgive yourself and all the rest of it is that healing yourself um, I feel it's a step on the process of healing but it's also quite fake it's fake because it's not when I say fake I mean not real to really forgive somebody, you've got to feel in your heart total forgiveness for them as a, and a feeling of love for them again. And the only way for that to occur is for you to release the emotion that they've caused within you or that you feel they've caused within you that would cause you to not do that. So for example, if I feel anger for you, right, obviously I'm not forgiving you. Let's say I then go, oh, I'll write down why I'm so angry with you. And then I burn that, you know, as, as a ceremony. Um, I'm still not yet released inside of me the reasons why I felt angry with you. To release the reasons why I felt angry with you, I've got to actually feel them. I've got to feel them inside of me. So I could feel, oh, she did this to me and she did that to me. And, I, and then I get underneath that and I eventually connect with some grief and cry grieving is the healing emotion so i cry that out and once i've cried that out and i feel about you i go oh wow i don't feel angry with her anymore even though she did that thing that is the point of forgiveness so i can verbalize it as much as i want talk about it as much as i want and say that i've forgiven as much as i want but until it's really happened inside of me it's not forgiveness do you follow so what about if you're feeling detached from the memory, though, because you work through those processes as best to your ability at that time? Well, there's a difference between detached and attached but forgiven or forgotten. Um, my feelings are that a lot of people who are on the New Age path who talk about forgiveness have yet to really forgive because you can see it in their own body. Their body continues to degrade when their body should actually be improving. You know, the fact is that while we're holding on to emotion towards another, our body continues to degrade in its own condition. And, and the issue that we face is that, that if we allow ourselves to, to think that we've forgiven somebody when the reality is that we're still yet to really do it, we're actually falsifying a condition within ourselves. And, and there's a lot of danger in falsifying our own condition to ourselves. That's the worst possible delusion like falsifying your condition to yourself stops you from being able to progress beyond that point and you'll never progress no matter how much help you get if you falsify to yourself your own condition my feelings are very strongly along the lines of if you allow yourself to fully feel the emotion you feel towards the person and you go through the grieving emotion not just the anger and the fear but it has to get to the real core grief of why you felt hurt or whatever and release that from you. In that moment, you know, that moment of release, 
now causes you to be in a state of forgiveness and the state of forgiveness will remain you'll be able to remember the event and not you'll be totally attached to the event in the sense that you know it happened it was all you're not trying to ignore it you're not trying to put it away you're not trying to deny it happened none of those things you're total in acceptance of it but whenever you feel about the person all you feel is a feeling of love for them that's forgiveness yep and that's very powerful that's one of the most powerful states that you can ever arrive at in your own development I think through doing that yeah you got to be really careful because that can change the dynamics of a relationship and can end a relationship um, I I agree but if you're forgiving someone and see when, when you go through the emotion the key is to not act upon the emotion until you've gone out the other end you know what I mean like so the, the problem that most happens with most relationships is we have emotions with each other in a relationship but I'm afraid to feel mine and my partner's afraid to feel hers when if we both had the recognition that actually no we both do need to feel our emotions so let's say I'm angry with Mary I need to feel I'm angry with Mary then I need to go under well, why am I so angry underneath that will be fear what am I afraid of I'm afraid maybe that Mary might leave me or I'm afraid of something else like that and then underneath that might be the real core emotion which is actually my mum left me when I was a child and and so now I'm afraid of every woman leaving me whoever meets sort of thing and then I release that emotion now I'm in the condition where I can make a decision. Yeah, you're, you're actually, I understand what you're saying there, but you're sort of talking about two people that want to communicate and two people that want to attain themselves and grow. Totally. Um, that's why I said you're yeah, probably, you know, I'm, I'm a bit sort of cautious in that sort of thing and giving people advice and that sort of thing because people might walk out of this room and go, you know, and try and do it on their partner. They change the dynamics of the relationship and the relationship ends, you know. And but I, I feel, let's say this is, this is male and this is a female in a partnership. I feel, firstly, that if one of those two do not want to change and the relationship is having trouble then it's highly unlikely that the relationship will ever be any better than it currently is, right? Because to, for a relationship to get better, two people are going to have to change, not just one. And so that's the first thing. Secondly, if those two people decide they want to be closer to each other, which I feel is a very positive goal in a relationship, then each person is going to have to look at themselves, not the other person the problem we have today on the relationships a lot is this person's looking at him and going I don't like this I don't like that I don't like this and so forth right and this fella is looking at her and going I don't like this I don't like that and this and so forth and none of them are looking at themselves and but isn't that acceptance of each other as well as yourself at that time in your life when you say acceptance of each other like I don't accept myself being in a condition of untruth. And also, by the way, I don't accept Mary being in a condition of untruth either. Yeah, but, um, well... How do you and by the way, I don't expect Mary to accept me being in a condition of untruth. But you've got to put up with the little things that annoy you, like... No. ...noses and farting and... Put up. And ...pulling the blankets off the bed, um, you know, and you get freezing cold because your partner's taking all the blankets. Isn't that, you know, isn't that about accepting them for who they are? No, they are Because they're not perfect. They are and all... And neither are you. They are all law of attraction events yeah. exposing an emotion in you that is not yet loving. Every single one of those events you mentioned. But if you learn to accept it, you learn to love it. No, if you learn to accept it, you learn to ignore the law of attraction event and you'll never get more loving yourself. Okay. So, so if, I, if, if Mary does something unloving towards me and I do not address that, then not only am I never going to grow in love, neither is Mary. Does that make sense? The problem, the problem what you're suggesting is if this person puts up with this person and this person puts up with this person, love isn't putting up with people. Love is loving them with your whole heart, like desiring everything about them. But it's very. It. Use the microphone. But you, but you learn it because you're going, okay, I don't like that he um, no, steals you're, the blanket you're and learning, I've said to him. You're learning to put up with things. And putting up with things but is not love. But we're human. And uh, see, see where we go with this. This is just another story we tell ourselves. 
you can be perfect and so can he if you both desire it you will have actually a perfect relationship such a thing is achievable on the on the earth certainly in the spirit world for hundreds of thousands of relationships and millions of relationships in fact and it's achievable on the earth the problem that we face is we keep putting up with crap from each other mm. saying that we're loving each other when in reality we feel quite annoyed with each other right and that is not loving love doesn't ever feel annoyed so that's our free will though expressing itself i agree you're allowed to do that if you wish I'm not, I'm not suggesting you can't do it. What I'm saying is it's not going to get you closer to God and it's not going to get you closer to your partner. But doesn't God love us any way we come, even if we're good or bad? Uh, certainly God loves us any way we come, but that doesn't mean we're going to receive God's love while we're being unloving to our partner or ourselves. Oh, I thought he gave us love no matter what. No, definitely not. Well, why has he got um, tickets on it? What do you mean, why has he got tickets on it? Well, you know, well, she doesn't love me enough and I don't love her enough, so he's going, oh, there's a scoreboard. One for her and one for her, but we've got to cross that bit out because she doesn't love her enough. God hasn't got a scoreboard. And we're only friends. God well, that's what it sounds like. He's got a scoreboard about his... That's because you're not understanding what I'm it. saying because you're not listening long enough to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at what's really happening with love. All right. Here's me. He is God. God loves me with all of her heart. Would you not agree? Yeah. My reception of that love is going to very, very much depend upon whether I block it from flowing through me or not. Okay. You understand? Block it, yes. Mm -hmm. I, and on the earth, almost all of us block love. Now, how do we block love? Well, firstly, one way is we don't want to be vulnerable. So if I have a feeling in my heart, I want to protect my heart. What you're doing is you're protecting your heart from being loved in that moment. So you're protecting it from other things too. You're protecting it from harm and other things. But you're also protecting yourself from being loved. right? And you want to control. Now when you want to control and protect yourself from being loved, you've now put a block between you and God. It's like God's love is there, ready to flow, ready to flow. And you're just blocking the whole thing off. You're just, you're just cutting it off, right? Now, God's love, even though God loves you, you cannot receive that love in that condition. You will reject it, in fact. You will actually actively reject any love that you're given, right? In that place. You, you will say, basically, it's like having a hand up to God and say, no, I don't want that from you. Uh, that's what you're doing in that place if you're protecting your heart. So you see, a person who is open to being loved never protects their heart. You look at a couple of teenagers who fall in love. They're not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow in the relationship, are they? They're totally focused on what they're enjoying right in that moment with love, right? And so the fact is that when we grow older and we get hurt in love we carry that hurt and then we get hurt again and we carry that hurt and so forth and we don't release them and so what happens then is it's like putting a block across us now there's the block God's love is not flowing now I'm saying to you that every single block that you have towards yourself and your partner right so this is your partner and if you have blocks towards her you are automatically also blocked towards God because part of God is masculine part of God is feminine so if you're blocked towards your partner which is fe say feminine then then you're automatically blocked towards the female part of God automatically closed down and that part of God's love is not going to flow into you it can't flow because you're shutting it down you're blocking it off so, so you're exercising your free will and you might find this relationship really good and you put up with each other <laughs> and the different injuries you have but in reality you're never going to get closer to God and also because you have this block in your heart you're really never going to get close to your mate either you're going to be in this kind of relationship where you see a lot where the man comes towards the woman the woman gets a bit scared, goes away you know, so the man then gets up, upset, he goes away, and then the woman feels upset, so she comes forward, and you have this dance thing going on in yeah, a relationship. It's called men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And it's none of it's true. <laughs> it's all about feelings. It's all about the feelings of rejection, you know, all these things that have come from our childhood that affect our relationship. And if we have a focus on God, God's love 
and, and receiving God's love, we can heal every one of those injuries that we have. But you know what happens on earth? For most of us, what happens is what happens with you. And that is you put up with things being not quite right because we tell ourselves that hopefully uh, we're all human and we've got to do that. My suggestion is stop putting up with things that are not quite right and start discussing them openly with each other. Start working through them, actively working through them. When you actively work through them, you just get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. If you don't actively work through them, you'll get to a point where you get this close and you won't get ever any closer because he's putting up with you and you're putting up with him and you don't ever get any closer to that. And ironically, because you're doing that, you're also never going to get closer to God either because you're blocking off that as well. My suggestion is if you work through, like what myself and Mary do constantly, is we work through things with each other. We're constantly, the primary thing in, for our life, besides our relationship with God, is our relationship with each other. We will put whole days on hold and discuss nothing else but an issue that we have between each other. Right? And many people will go, that's just such a little issue. Why are they even talking about that? The way we look at it is every single issue that we have between each other is blocking each other from getting closer to each other. And because Mary has the same passion as I do about it, we're going to definitely get closer as a result. And we are always getting closer. Every new week, we are closer again and closer again as a result. If you, if you just put up with it, then you'll get to that point of putting up with it and you won't get any closer. Nothing will change from that point on. From that point on, you have no hope of ever being happier than you currently are. But if you allow yourself to do, deal in truth with each other now and talk about these issues, you will continue then getting closer again. And you'll get to the point where you'll actually get to a union if you do that with God. You'll get to a point where you're actually joined together so much that what I feel and think and what Mary feels and thinks are identical, even if we're miles apart from each other. We'll actually be so connected that I can feel her every moment and she can feel me every moment. That already happens quite frequently with us, but, but you know, it ha it'll happen permanently where every single moment, doesn't ma matter where Mary is, I'll be able to feel everything she's feeling, everything she's thinking, everything that she, she desires, everything that she wants, all of those things. And every single moment, she will be able to feel everything I'm thinking, everything I'm feeling, everything I desire. And ironically, at the same time, both of our desires will often meet in that space so what's it called if one of you can feel the other like constantly and know to ring up and, and ask about their safety for the day because of the type of job they've got and yep. um, rock up at the at the job because um you know you're supposed to be there because someone else is going to be there then and you know there's a conversation that takes place that's significant for something else what about if you're so in tune to them is it just because of the spiritual connection or are you really connected to them I would say there's one word for that. Yep. Why that? Well, you think about it. If I'm so connected to Mary and she has no idea what I'm feeling at all, what kind of relationship is that? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, if, if it was happening with us two, with me and myself and Mary, what would you think? So if I, if I knew everything Mary was feeling, everything she's thinking, I don't know what she wants to do, and I'm trying to enable her in her life, and Mary at the same time doesn't know anything about what I'm feeling, doesn't know anything about what I'm thinking, and doesn't try to enable my life in any way, what would you call that? Well, through the amount of experience I've had with spirit, I would just say that they keep talking to me about my partner. That spirit's actually telling me about what's benefit for me for that day or what could help my partner because you know if I ring up at that time it could you know distract them from doing something else I agree so that's but, what I've always thought yeah but that tells me that I'm in a lot of fear about this relationship okay because if I wasn't in fear about this relationship Mary's desire for me would be as strong as my desire for her Mary's desire to know me would be as strong as my desire to know her Mary's desire to think about me would be as strong as my desire to think about her 
if as soon as one of us has a lower desire than the other, then there's an issue in the relationship. And the relationship cannot be as good under those circumstances as it could be. Mm. Right? That makes sense, right? Like if, if we both desire each other perfectly, or we both desire each other even to the same degree, then there will be some meeting of hearts in the relationship. But if one does all the desiring and the other one just takes all, does all the taking, mm. then that's not a relationship anymore, mm -hmm. right? That, that's, I'd call that a nursing arrangement or something like that, right? In terms of the nursing of the heart, you know? Um, that's really what it is. If for two people to really come together, both need to eventually desire each other the same intensity, want each other the same amount, want to know each other the same amount and so forth. Now, I'm not suggesting that if that's not the case, then just go your separate ways. What I'm suggesting is if that's not the case, then begin to work between each other as to why it's not the case. Does that make sense? What about if the other person wouldn't even dream of doing that? Then obviously you're not in the right relationship in the first place, yes? Well, remember what I originally said when I began this. What did I say? Remember I drew the man and the woman just five minutes or ten minutes ago and I said, if those two people don't desire the relationship as much as each other and only yeah. one person desires to change... So can you ask God to make it easy on the person if you chose to walk away from them? So that it, because you knew where you were in your place, but it would upset them because they didn't get it. Will God listen to a prayer where you're asking God to change somebody else's experience? Yeah. Will God? I don't know. Will well, he? what about free will that we discussed half an, an hour ago? Will God influence their free will and so that you don't have to feel guilty about something you're doing? No, not so you feel guilty, so they're not going through their, their emotions. No, they need to go through their emotions. God feels they need but to go through their But what about the impact emotions. it has on the whole family? <laughs> what is How it? can you spare someone? What How is can, it you don't want to hear? Can you ask God to spare someone's feelings? No, definitely not. Why would I ever want to spare your feelings? Your feelings are a part of you. No, not my feelings. There. It doesn't matter whose feelings. They're a part of the person. Why would God ever spare them? Well, no wonder people are stuck in relationships. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason why you're asking all of these questions without hearing the answer. What's the reason? Put, give the mic. Give the, take back the mic. <laughs> Cause it, cause it, it's too hard to do ah, without. Ah, that's exactly. It's too hard to do without causing pain to others. Ah, that's exactly. So if you love people, you don't want to cause them pain, though, and that's why you stay where you are. See, this is this is a false belief about love. You just believe a false thing about love. Yeah. Right now, the truth is that that you're saying, asking all these questions because of a fear. The fear, is, the fear is that you can't do it without somebody getting hurt. Yeah. That's your fear. See, I don't have that fear. You do. Well, how come some shrinks say yeah. that it's what I was talking about with acceptance and all that? How come they're at the level of thinking that that's okay? Is it because they haven't reached their own levels of stuff in their lives? Of course. Why do you think they've become psychologists or psychiatrists? I don't know. I don't ask everyone their profession. Yeah. <laughs> well, most of the time it's because they've yet to heal those particular things in their own lives. Okay. And that, that's the reason why most people do most things. And the reality is fear drives most of the planet when it comes to relationships. So, so if I've got a poor relationship with Mary and I want to believe my relationship with Mary is good... Then you come along and describe the poor relationship you have with your partner, let's say, as an example. I'm going to say, no, no, you haven't got a poor relationship with your partner. You yeah, know, it's just that you need to accept him more and you need to do this and you need to do that. You see, I'm going to base my counsel of you with you on this relationship that I have that I don't want to face. And this is a problem with a lot of advice that we receive from other people. A lot of times we go to people for advice and instead of them telling us the truth about love, what they're really doing is telling us the truth about their relationship. So will spirits tell you the same crap then? <laughs> <laughs> we need to stop letting you have the mic now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because you've asked enough of this. 
And you need to feel your fear about that, the fear that it's not possible. The fear that a perfect relationship is not possible. This is a belief you have, that a perfect relationship is not possible. But to be honest with you, in your soul, you dearly would like one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone does. I agree. But you are so afraid of it that when I tell you how to have a perfect relationship, you don't want to do it. Because you're, you don't want to do it because you are afraid. I don't want to hurt anyone. You're talking without the mic again. <laughs> you don't want to do it. I told you that means don't talk anymore. Just listen. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to feel the fear that you're not going to have a perfect relationship. That's what you don't want to feel. And the reason for most of your questions is because you're afraid that you're never going to have a perfect relationship. And so now you want me to tell you to put up with an imperfect one. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to tell you that. Because I don't believe anybody should ever put up with an imperfect relationship. I believe you can begin with an imperfect relationship, but I also believe that you can improve it to become perfect that's how I feel and so and so I feel fear just dictates that and one reason why you're afraid is because you're afraid that he will not do it and you you know as I said at the beginning that both need to do it for it to become perfect that's the way it is that both need to have a desire to improve a relationship before a relationship can actually improve and my suggestion is if a person doesn't want to prove improve you can still love them you can say, look, I, I love you, but I can't be with you until you want to change this. And I'm perfectly happy if, if Mary decided tomorrow that she said, look, I don't want to keep on changing and I don't want to keep on growing towards you. I'd say, no worries, darling. We'll have to separate then. Right? And I still love her. I'm not going to go to anybody else. Right? But I'm not, I can't be with Mary while she feels like she wants to do something else. And once she's finished doing whatever she wishes to do, and one day she might come back and, and, and be with me again. But I'm not going to have another relationship. That's how I feel. And I made that decision three or four years before I met Mary. Yeah. So the truth is that you can have a perfect relationship. The, the truth is that most of us are so scared of one, number one. Two, we tell ourselves all these untruths about love that we have no, you know, we just accept all of these untruths about love because that's what we were told. And we accept them. But, but what I'm saying is a per perfect relationship is achievable on this planet. But it's only achievable by working towards God and working towards each other, not putting up with each other. If you decide to put up with each other, you're deciding to put up with imperfection. And you're deciding also to put up with things with each other. And eventually what you put up with gets so big that in the end you don't like each other anyway. That's what generally happens. And it's very damaging to a relationship. You've been so patient. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Um, I was going to say a lot of the stuff that you're actually saying is like um, actually resonates with the last probably either 23 year relationship you yep. know, with Melissa and stuff like that. Like, yep. And a lot of the stuff you said, which particularly at that time we were going through all that difficulty. Um, we wouldn't have understood any of that. And, and that's the trouble, isn't it? Like we, we finish up, like we don't get taught anything from our parents about relationships nothing. generally. We just look at our parents' relationship as either good or bad or in between. Usually yeah. it's in between. And they've got no idea why it's in between. Yeah. <laughs> and so we grow up having no idea about relationship. We just feel attracted to someone. We get together with them. And then as problems develop, we've got no idea how to resolve them. Mm. Cause, and, and partly it's because we're not working towards God. <laughs> Partly it's because we're not self-reflective. And partly it's also because the, our partner may be not self-reflective. So, so it needs all things to occur before mm. our real relationship can develop mm. properly. And uh, my, I'm, myself and Mary are very passionate about our relationship. Like it's, um, to us it's the biggest relationship aside from our personal relationships with God. So, so without... It, like we... We would rather deal with our relationship than deal with any other issue. Whereas most people, they feel sort of almost like, oh, I can't deal with my relationship. It's just, it's just in the too hard basket. 
you know. And but what I'm proposing to you is, if you don't, it's never going to be better than what it is. Mm. And and in fact, there's a high likelihood it'll get worse. Mm. That's the way most things are. Now, now just um, one of the questions when we were talking through the um, healers and mediumship. Mm -hmm. um, well, what's an ideal way that a medium or healer can actually um, make the most benefit in healing or working with a mediumship with someone? All right. Well, firstly, there's our physical body, our spirit body. Now the heads are always permanently bigger. And then there's the soul, right? Now, as I've illustrated to you already, the soul is the real cause of all issues in the physical and the spirit bodies. Mm. Now, if I'm a healer, most of the time I'm conscious of, he of working on the spirit body generally. Most healers nowadays are, right? So if I'm a healer focusing on the spirit body, am I focusing on the cause of the physical or spirit body's ailments? I'm not. It's only when I focus on the soul and the soul's condition. Now, the soul's condition is made up of a number of things. It's firstly made up of its emotional condition. In other words, there's emotions that it has suppressed within it that cause physical ailments in the bodies. There's also beliefs. And our beliefs are emotions still, but there are specific beliefs about love in particular. Mm. Anything that I believe about love that's out of error with the way God's created us to be will also cause physical problems in both bodies. There's also things called morals, which are really, again, emotions, but they are where I have a set of morality uh, issues within myself. For example, if I'm a male and I feel it's okay to have sex with any woman I see that's pretty, then I've got a moral issue because I'm already out of harmony with the concept of soulmates, which is something that God created, right? There's only one soulmate. And so therefore my morality needs to have some work. So morals have also an effect on both bodies and their physical condition, the disease in both bodies. And we can list further things that all affect from the soul, affect these bodies. Now, if I'm there trying to heal the body, right? Yeah. Just heal this spirit body or heal the physical body even. Like let's say I'm a doctor and I'm doing naturopathy and I'm trying to heal the physical body. Or I'm a pranic healer or a Reiki expert or whatever and I'm trying to heal the spirit body. And I'm not conscious of the fact that these things are all in the soul driving the injuries and disease in both bodies. Then can you see I'm really trying to cause, cause cure yes. the effect yep. rather than cure the real cause so whenever we engage any healing modality whether it be of the physical body or the spirit body as long as we're aware that there is a real cause in the soul that is related to issues all of these issues by the way are really issues of love or belief systems about love that are in the soul and unless the soul can be healed these bodies will never be healed permanently it's, it's just automatic. It cannot happen. Uh, and so the, the second part of that, so if someone's, say, open to, say, divine love, will the healer be better at what they're doing? Will that help? And, oh, very, and, and in what ways? Very, very much better. Because, because when someone's open to divine love, their soul is open to love. You see, divine love doesn't flow into the spirit body and it doesn't flow into the physical body. It actually flows into the soul and then it has a subsequent effect on the bodies. So if the soul is open to love, in particular open to God's love flowing into it, that is the, that, that is the time you have the best capacity to heal the yeah. person. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, so, so if the soul is open to love, it doesn't really matter what condition the soul is in. It can be in a real bad condition with all these different motions and all these different beliefs and morals that are out of harmony. But as, so, as long as it's open to receiving the love and has a desire, or we, I often call it a longing or a desire for receiving divine love, right? And if it has the desire, then the soul is open. And in fact, in fact, 
just having the desire opens the soul and if it has a has an open soul now love God's love can flow so if I'm a healer helping it I'm praying for God's love to flow into the person to heal them if their soul is open now they have the capacity to be permanently healed and ironically they'll have some emotions come out of them that will change they'll have some belief systems change probably as well and so forth in that process so so pretty much the sum is um, by having them in a position where they're open and then allowing God's love to flow instead of other spirits or this or this or this exactly it will then happen naturally God is the most powerful being in the universe why ask for a spirit's help when you could ask for God's help it doesn't make sense really not really does it it's like no, that's right. and if God wants to heal us which God does want to do like God is this has this passionate desire to heal mankind mm. and if we're open to that healing we can be healed so 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 what's the point of the person praying for a spirit's help when really the best option is to go straight to the source of our body and our soul and long for their love to enter them to, like this even works with animals as well by the way it's the same principle with animals as well as the human form like if you like there are some people that um, use spirit uh, spirits to, to anesthetize an animal so they can work on them to heal them physically right when you ask God to anesthetize the animal it's like bang they're out <laughs> do you know what I mean like it's to totally instant whereas if you ask the spirit it might take a few minutes to do that and there's people we know personally who do that kind of healing and and the truth is that if you involve God in the process everything now is sort of ramped up in your capa cap capacity to do something about the situation yeah. uh, do you believe that um, God won't deny um, a healing or won't deny things to a person um, if uh, well, it's sort of my belief that if you believe in God and you're open and you're spiritually healed um, that it's not possible for God to deny you what you need yep I agree but let's go one step further what is the de definition of being open my feeling is the definition of being open is we have to have this open heart towards God's love yeah. flowing into us but the problem for many of us is we're not that open to God's love flowing in because we have issues of worth we feel unworthy of it mm. we feel like ashamed of ourselves a lot and all of these feelings block us from actually being open so once we fully open what you state is definitely the truth yes I Every, thoroughly believe that too yeah, everything yep. that we ask will be given that's right because we'll also be in a state of love as we're asking it so we'll be in harmony with truth when we're asking as well mm. we won't be selfish about it in other words yeah yep. yep 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 you want to say something about that babe it's time is it yeah well it's pretty close to time but can we maybe have one more question because there's been we've been focused over here so much <laughs> yeah. um, i was going to ask you about the chakras but you already covered that, that yep was, that that's was right John, yeah um what about um kundalini um do you know about the kundalini and how yeah, does it yeah. work uh, yeah. yeah um all of these energies there are energies coming from god's universe and also from god that are not divine love but are other forms of energy so god has a energy that she uses to feed the universe in terms of keeping the universe operational god has an energy that she uses to heal the universe and put all of these timings in precision and to to actually have the universe operate smoothly god also has an energy that keeps all the laws in place that god has made and uh, there's all these different energies now the kundalini energy is one of those energies um, but it is not divine love divine love is a specific energy that is about your personal relationship with God it's not an energy that's about anything that other than your emotional feelings about God and her emotional feelings for you which is very very separate to all of the other forms of energy now these other forms of energy are all very very helpful in the healing of a person but at the end of the day they don't establish the growth of the soul they only establish the healing and maintenance of the soul 
which are very different roles. So, so for example, the Kundalini energy and the other energies of God allow for the maintenance and feeding and, and, and so forth of the soul and therefore of the bodies, but they do not allow for this personal relationship between yourself and God, like, a, like God being mum or dad type of relationship. The, the only thing that enhances that relationship and therefore the only thing that's going to allow your soul to grow infinitely is the reception of that love from God, the actual the love that transforms the soul into a new being. And this is where a lot of the spirits that are on the natural love path who do all of these healing forms and all of these healing modalities, they all think they're talking about the love of God, but in reality the love of God is an emotion based on a relationship between my feelings for God and God's feelings for me and, and in, for that, that for every individual. And, it, and so it's very important to get, I feel, if you want to progress infinitely, to get away from the physicality, if you like, or the metaphysicality of, of healing and all of these other things and start seeing love as, and love being an emotion, not just an idea or a concept, but rather an emotion that flows between two people. And once you can understand that love is like that, an emotion that flows between two people that can enhance their experience of each other, and then you start feeling that for God, and then you really start understanding what it means to receive divine love and feel it and then have that transform your life, which is very, very different from, from having the kundalini energy enter you and very, very different from having the energy of being fed by God. Actually, you can live off of God's energy in terms of physically. You don't even need to eat, but that's not the same as God's love either. So God's love is this, is this unique, personal love-based emotional relationship between yourself and God which is very different than these other energy forms does that make sense John like you know, <clears throat> no that's good um, what about enlightenment what uh... well all the spirits on the natural love path believe they're enlightened by the time they hit the sixth dimension or the sixth sphere so all of the theories of enlightenment that have been given to the world have all come from spirits in that location they are the same spirits who call themselves gods you know we're all god in other words they say that they're the same spirits who believe that they are all powerful they're the same spirits who believe that they have done to they've progressed to the pinnacle of man's progression and they're the same spirits that have almost created every single religion or religious path on the earth and the same spirits that have created the new age movement now all of those spirits all believe they have become enlightened but they are still in the sixth dimension of the spirit world and the primary reason why they are is because they believe things about God that are not true and they believe things about their own soul that are not true still and they have yet to enter a personal relationship with God that's emotional that's that's actually got these huge feelings involved in them and so my suggestion is to do, even if you don't believe what I'm saying, my suggestion is to experiment with that. In other words, experiment on one hand with all the energy forms that you're using, and then because God doesn't mind an experiment, right? And then experiment on the other hand with this feeling coming from your soul towards God and a fear, and attempting to feel God's emotion entering you. And when you start experimenting between the two different things, you will find after a while you'll, you'll get to the point where you'll give up all of these energy forms and whatever else because you realise the power of this love of God is much greater than all these other things. And in fact, I said in the first century that when you seek first God's love, all these other things will be added to you. In other words, if you seek first this personal, emotional relationship with God, then all these other things, all this pranic healing and all, you know, all these other things where I can understand my body and understand my spirit body and heal my body and heal somebody else, and all of those things will come afterwards. All of those things will happen automatically. The problem for most of us as humans is we want all of those things and we forget about love. And yet love is the greatest, and particularly God's love, is the greatest power in all the universe. And yet we forget about that in favour of what we can 
tangibly see or feel or, or see happening. And, and my suggestion for anybody who wants to really progress infinitely is to focus f your whole intention on love and forget about all the other things for a while. Just your whole intention on love, humility, truth, just those three things. And you'll find that after a while, these other things that you felt were really important questions, like, so we've answered a lot of these questions tonight, where you feel really important questions, but it will get to the point that the questions about love are the most important questions that you ever, ever feel or think about. Yeah. And the spirits, the spirits here have got a lot of questions, but the primary one they want to ask is, what are the feelings that they need to address? Because they can see a lot of things that's going on. Yeah. But in particular with this particular group, they had felt that their purpose was to live through them and to do this work. Yeah. So they're just now, they've categorized it into the one question is, what are the feelings that they're not actually addressing? All right, well, the first, the first things for the spirits to address of this, um, and I feel this is the same whether we're spirits or people on earth living still. The first things we want to address are the issues and belief systems that we have around God. That's number one. So in instead of having a focus of helping people on earth and all these other things, because once you understand God and God's creations, you begin to understand everything else automatically. It's, a, it's an automatic process. So the first thing is God. Then the second thing to understand is self. But in self, remember, there's two halves. There's yourself and your soulmate. So in other words, you will also, when you understand self, understand the relationship between the genders. You'll understand all of those sexual matters and sexual issues as well. Now, any emotion that prevents our concept of God being true is going to interfere with our further development. And any emotion within ourselves that prevents our self from being examined is going to influence our further progress. So for, spirit, for the spirits, what they've been doing to a degree with the group, with you as a group generally, is that, is, and for many of you, the ones that have been getting together regularly, what's been happening with the spirits is that the spirits have been going, we want to help you become healers of the earth. We want to help you to do all of these powerful things on the earth. That's our role. But, but the problem is the spirits themselves have not yet fully connected to God. And they have yet to fully connect to themselves. And so what they're trying to do is help you do something they've already done, but not something that they have yet to do. And what we would like to, to see is firstly, if, if people could focus, and this spirits as well, focus firstly on their relationship with God and look at all the emotional injuries that they have surrounding their relationship with God. Sometimes it's issues of punishment. They feel like God's like a punishing God. And sometimes it's other issues, you know, with God. Deal with the issues with God. And then secondly, deal with the issues that they have towards themselves. And I, and I also mean by that towards their opposite their, their other self which is their soul mate if they deal with those two issues first then when they come to help the group they will be focused on the soul rather than on the spirit body at the moment they're very focused on the spirit body and not on the soul but the key is to understand the soul and that's understanding self because we are soul and God is the universal great soul of the universe and if if we can understand soul and understand also this personal relationship with god then all the other things will become clear to them as as to what would be the best thing to do with their reaction and interaction with people on earth and the irony is that they will also have more power to help the people on earth but they will not abuse that power through the abuse of free will so they won't do that either. They have further questions. So far away. No, they're actually quite gentle. They're quite gentle in yep. nature. They're not uh, malevolent in that type. No. No. Well, no spirit who wants to help people on earth is generally malevolent. So. I mean, they can actually see, they can understand that there is a soul, but they, it's not attainable to them because they could follow, there's an extra core that they could not. That's right. What, the way they've been seeing it is that they see the physical body of the person, right? And they see the spirit body of the person and they realise there's got to be something behind that, 
but they don't really know what it is. And many times they have tried to heal the spirit body and found that the spirit body would not heal. Is that not true? No, that's true. Yeah. And they, so therefore they understood there must be some other factor influencing the body that's causing it to not heal, but they didn't understand that actually that's the soul and its belief systems, its emotions and passions and desires and its, and its stuff inside of it emotionally that's out of harmony with love that actually affects the spirit body. So, so they're trying... So they're like doctors here on earth, right? A doctor here on earth is trying to heal the physical body without, most of them, without any knowledge of any spirit body. Does that make sense? Yep. That's what they're trying to do. Now, the spirits with many of you are trying to heal the spirit body without any knowledge of the soul. And my suggestion is if they connect to God and connect to themselves more fully through this process that some bright spirits that are here will, can help them with, what they will do is they will start to connect to the soul and it's the soul, the healing of the soul that will create these healings. And then everything they do will have an effect. They also say they have a desire to help heal people and, um, and that's the reason why they've been working with the individuals they've been working with. Mm -hmm. How do they actually align that now with God's desire? And well, what does that mean for them? If God desired healing of the world and, they, and God desired to heal it in the manner in which they were healing it, God would already be doing it. Can they understand that? Mm -hmm. like God has so much love for mankind... <laughs> that she would already be healing the spirit bodies of people if she wanted to. So the fact that the spirit bodies of people are not being healed by God directly indicates that God wants something else to be healed instead. Do they understand what I'm saying with that? Yep. So what that means is that, that while I'm focused on the healing of the spirit body, like a doctor on earth is focused on the healing of the physical body, God can't help that entire process because, because God wants the healing of the soul. Do they, they see what I'm saying? And, if, and God knows that if we heal the soul, we'll heal everything. There's no need to heal the spirit body. We won't need doctors anymore. <laughs> And God also knows that if we heal the soul, we won't need pranic healers or Reiki masters or any of those kind of people either anymore. Does that make sense? Because when you heal this part of you, everything is automatically healed. That's their fear. They'll have no other purpose. No, they will. Because the truth and love are the two greatest purposes we could ever have. So, so anything where they could help with love and truth on the planet and in the spirit world is going to automatically have a healing on the soul so the, the, the problem with many um, spirits is they have the same problem that a doctor faces on earth generally the problems that a doctor faces on earth generally is that he is frustrated by his inability to heal everything in the physical body most doctors have this huge passion to heal the person and heal their physical form but they get so frustrated because parts of their body is dying and they don't understand why and parts of the body you know like things like cancers are happening and they don't understand why those cancers are happening and so forth so they get frustrated and they try harder they develop more medicine and so forth to try and cure all those things but they're not curing the cause and for many of the spirits it's the same what they're doing is they're trying to do all this pranic healing reiki healing and all these other forms of healing that they have and there's literally like now hundreds of modalities of healing that have been developed from the spirit world and what they're trying to do is heal the spirit body but they're frustrated because every time they try to heal the spirit body they only get to a certain degree and then what happens is they it doesn't work anymore and they don't know why and I know you may, but the spirits I'm talking to you don't. No, I'm saying to you that actually the majority of spirits who have been helping the majority of you do not understand the soul. And, and as Anto knows and these spirit knows, um, like the spirits are talking to him about that, they know they don't understand the soul. So I'm suggesting to you, actually, that the majority of spirits in the spirit world under the sixth dimension do not understand the soul. 
They actually can't see the cell. No, they can't see it. They don't even know what it looks like. They've never seen it. They can see differences in people with divine love in terms of their spirit body. It's just geometrically different. Yes, exactly. And the, the geometric shapes of the spirit body are different, but they can't see the reason why they're different. Does that make sense? Um, can we use a mic? Um, Jane will bring one up. Uh, would you say the soul is the essence of uh, the being of a person? Yeah, but the, define the root, essence. The root, uh, the, the root core of where we began, the, the spark of where we began. Yeah, I feel the soul has a spark. Um, the best way I can, can portray a soul to you is that the soul um, has love, but the soul is not love because it's not only love. The soul has power, but it is not power. It is, a power is just an attribute of the soul or a characteristic of the soul. Yeah. The soul has personality, but personality is not the soul because yeah. personality is just a net characteristic of the soul. Yeah. So if you can think of it like the soul is a container of your, of your true being, but remember, you are only a half of it. So your soulmate's the other half of it. And this is why the majority of spirits don't understand. It's because they've actually never seen a soul in union. You see, when you, when you progress in the spirit world, and you progress up the dimensions, I'll just draw another colour. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, these spirits are under the sixth dimension or at the sixth dimension. And they have never, ever seen a soul in union because they can't actually see a soul. You can't actually see the soul until you're in the 22nd dimension. So these spirits have been limiting their own development because, they, because they've been trying to develop the spirit body without understanding. They, they've seen the evidence of something behind it that they can't see, but they don't understand what's behind it. And what's behind it is not just like I'm not a soul. I am one half of this soul. And this other half of the soul is a, is a part of me as well and that affects me and so in the end we need to come to understand that this soul of which I am a half is what affects these bodies and until we heal this soul until we actually understand this soul we're not going to truly understand anything else and the spirits that Anto is speaking with know that I've seen the healing of these bodies occur thinking that this is the soul they believe that was the soul. But they know it can't be now because there's something else going on. There's a, all through their healing, they've been trying to heal, but, but it always something goes wrong. You know, it, always, it never did with me. Um, if, if, you ask, if you go to a medium who's, who's on the divine love path and ask them what's been happening behind the scenes with the healing with you, mm. you'll find what I'm explaining to you is exactly what's been happening. But again, you don't have to believe me. Uh, no, My no, it's not, is to... I, I'm not. What I'm saying is that you said that um, that it's not possible for. Can I can I ask you this question? Sure. Um, are all the people you healed growing older? We all are. No, we aren't. I'm sorry, but we aren't. Are all the people you healed growing older? I wouldn't know because I haven't seen them for about five yep. or six years. Well, we, you check them out and see if they're growing older. Because the truth is, when you do soul healing... Uh, no, they're not, actually. I just recalled a couple that I saw um, or eight months ago, and no, they're not. They're very happy, joyous, and love. Yeah, I don't balance. mean that. I mean, physically, have they got more wrinkles? No. Have they, you know... And the key is you need to be a bit honest, more honest here, I feel. But if you, if you look at uh, the no, healing... No, honestly, they haven't. The, the two that I've kept in contact with, no, they haven't. Right. They're young, they're vibrant, they're happy... And they've got no aches and pains? Um, no, one of my friends has got an eye problem. Yeah. They've got no emotional issues in their life? Like, they've got no relationship problems? They're in a relationship and they've got no relationship problems? No, they continually work on them. No, see, I'm saying a person who's healed at the soul level doesn't have any of those things. When you're healed completely at soul level, you don't have any of those things. That's what I'm suggesting. I know. You don't have any of those. No, I'm not completely healed at the soul level. I told you that. 
I've told you that I've still got a lot more to do. Remember I said, I'm, I think I said to someone as a private answer, that, that I've still got emotional healing to do in this area of my body with women. I've still got, so no, I'm definitely not in that condition. Okay. So um, you said that you're only half the soul. Is yeah. God your other half? Or, no. Or a, a female? Mary is your other half. So, you, so does everyone have their soulmate on this planet at the time they're existing? Yes. Unless they've died from unforeseen circumstances or occurrences like an accident or something like that. So then how can the person progress mm -hmm. in a relationship if they've missed out on meeting their soulmate? It's immaterial. You will always meet your soulmate whether they've passed or not. You will always meet them and you can meet them right now even if they've passed. So you can meet passed. them if they've passed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. You can progress but, but again it's understanding soul and the question the question that this began from was I wanted to help the spirits involved because these spirits have been helping people on earth for many, many years not understanding what's behind everything. Yeah. And there's many spirits in the spirit world that are like that. They don't understand what's behind it all but they see that something must be because what they expect to happen here is not happening. Even with soulmates they don't understand what a soulmate is. Exactly. Many of them have never even met their own soulmate. Okay. Right. So um, they don't even understand that you're a half of a soul yet, really. Yep. When my mum passed away, I was with her, mm -hmm. and I looked up, something urged me to look up, and I did, and it was like a waft of smoke leaving. Was that her spirit or her soul? Well, that was the, her life force, really, yeah. Life force, yeah. 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 Which, is, which is her soul leaving, uh, and the spirit body leaving her body. She yep. died at that time. Yeah. Yep. You will actually feel it happen, and ironically, scientists can actually measure it happening. Okay. Because the body without the soul weighs less. Yeah. So is there when a you die, to love and do God? Did you know that, that when you die, you instantly weigh less? No. Yeah. Your body without the soul, uh, without the spirit body and soul attached to it, weighs less. Sorry. You can actually measure it as a weight of it leaving. The instant it happens, the instant there is a different weight. 21 grams or whatever it is, yeah. yeah. So is there a shortcut to love and God? <laughs> you always want shortcuts to everything. Girl. Yeah. What's going on with you? My life's been so long. <laughs> your life's only halfway there. <laughs> your life's eternal. How can you want a shortcut? <laughs> I've been taking so long. I'm there is no it. shortcuts to loving God. And the reason why there's no shortcuts is because it has to be a sincere process. Like love is a sincere feeling. It's a sincere process. It's not something where you go, oh, yeah, no worries there, you know, shortcut here, shortcut there. There's no shortcut to receiving divine love. Of course, receiving divine love gives you shortcuts in a lot of other areas of your life, but there is no shortcut in the process. You will need... It, 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 God examines you right the way through. Every single flaw you have will all have to be confronted. Every single emotion you have that's out of harmony with love will have to be confronted. Every single thought you have that's out of harmony with love will be confronted. Every single belief you have that is out of harmony with truth will be confronted. That's the way it is. I like that. A lot of people don't. And that's why a lot of people give it up. They try it for a little bit of time and then give up doing it because it does require everything of you, which when you think about it, it makes sense. Love does require everything of us, really, in the end. It requires nothing but everything in a way. It's like love is a gift that we give to others, but, but for love to be pure, it has to be refined. Everything that's, that's out of harmony with it needs to be let go of. Yeah. Well, um, it's getting pretty late now, guys, isn't it? I think, yeah. Can I just ask one more? Does anyone know where we can get a hotel for the night? A hotel for the night? Any guys who are local know? Uh, there's one next door. Right 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 yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, AJ. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Mary over there wanted a question. Over Mary. in the far seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to have your question? I'll give you one lucky. The, you'll be the lucky last person. About 200. <laughs> I've had 200 and you coming has made me aware of a lot more just over the last few days. Mm -hmm. And so I really don't know which one to choose. Right. And I got given two today from yep. someone else who went to see you in Albury. Yep. 
Well, how about you do what's for you rather than the person in Albury? Because I know them and I've already answered some of their questions. Yeah. Um, Well, I don't know where to start, so just one little one is, say, when you're meditating Mm -hmm. and you're thinking about lots of other things Mm -hmm. and then you get a picture Mm -hmm. of something and it can be a really beautiful one. Like for me, I had one recently from nowhere hadn't thought about my brother for a very long time but suddenly it was him and he had a lot of light around him and he's passed yes Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't talk about anything but I had a feeling of sort of like barracking or keep doing what you're doing and so I left uh, the meditation uh, thinking I think my brother's grown in love for God definitely and before he died I have a lot of issues with that Mm -hmm. about myself, you know, and your failings and all that in regard to that. But before he died, it really struck me that he had this relationship with Jesus and he would talk about it quite a lot. He had a brain tumour too. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of bad things had happened to him when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, via the church, you know, and a priest, and we no one ever found out in our family until yeah. he got this brain tumour. Yeah. And so it amazed me that he still kept up this relationship with Jesus and mm-hmm. uh, a faith. Well, I feel one thing that was unique about your brother is this. For many people, when they're harmed by a religion, they blame the source of the religion or what they believe to be the source of the religion for the harm. So, so for many people, when they, when they have some kind of abuse at the hands of a religion, what happens is they blame Jesus, generally, myself, for creating that problem. And he never did. He never and that's, did. Very, that's very unique, actually. And that's why he was able to progress very, very quickly in the spirit world as a result. Because he, he didn't hold on. He, he, he attached the blame of the action to the people who perpetrated the action rather than to the organisation as a whole. Do, do you understand? Yes. So instead of attaching it to the Catholic Church, was it? Yeah. Instead of attaching it to the Catholic Church as a whole, even, he attached it to the individuals who perpetrated the act. Yeah. And that's a very powerful thing to do because what it does is it allows you to grieve the act and allows you to grieve and forgive the person. Whereas if you attach it to a whole, what finishes up doing is it detunes you from the process of grieving about the act and it detunes you from the process of actually grieving about the person and forgiving the person who did it. And your your brother um, didn't get locked up in that sort of stagnant condition of blaming an organisation when he felt the emotions towards an individual or two in the organisation. And that helped him a lot in the spirit world after he passed. Yeah. yeah. So he, what I thought I might have felt or sort of pictured happened. Yeah, I, I feel very strongly that your brother is just letting you know that you know what you've been doing the last few months is leading you on the right path now and he's just reminding you. And the reason why it comes to you during a meditation is because when you're in a meditation, you are open to images coming into your mind and and therefore open to spirits just dropping their thoughts in and dropping pictures in and so forth. And if it's a spirit who loves you and cares about you, he'll just drop. I've got the other ones I only just found out about. Mm -hmm. Well, I sort of knew, but they talk all the time. (sighs) Yeah. Which I could do too. And um, the picture ones are different. And the picture ones are fairly... When they happen, which is not very frequently, yeah. they, they feel very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times the ones who are giving pictures are giving pictures of like things like even where they live and, and an image of how they look and a few other things like that. And a lot of times they're doing that along with... You probably feel like a flow of love over you, a tingling sensation or love flowing over you. And And it's sort of cotton woolly or... Yeah, yeah. And uh, those kind of spirits generally are far more loving than a spirit who will come along and chatter in your ear. Yeah, this this one's... Yeah. Very annoying. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are quite bossy, huh? 
Pushy. Got a million, million of the, those sort of things, but I just really wanted to find out if I was on the right thinking path about my yeah, what I, feel, I saw. Yeah, the key is to trust those particular experiences. You, you have them with a feeling of love, mm -hmm. so trust them. Remember I said the way to tell with, between a spirit and who, who cares about you is how much love you feel from that spirit. Mm -hmm. Just like how if you care, you know, if a person on earth cares about you, you'll feel either love from them or not, you know. So allow yourself to feel the love that you feel from the spirit. And in that process, you'll find that you'll be, it'll be very clear message generally. And the key is to trust it. Most people on earth have these experiences and then don't trust them very much because we go, oh, you know, it was a strange experience or whatever, but we don't actually emotionally trust the experience and we need to come to do that. Yeah. So is he trying to say to me that my heart will open up? I'm very certain your heart will open up. Oh, okay. So is he, of course. Yeah. Pardon? So is he. <laughs> I just feel like it's been shut for a very long time. It has, yeah. So that's right too. Yeah, of course. Thank you. You need to trust you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for inviting myself and Mary to come down here and uh, talk with you. And uh, we're very happy that we could do so. Um, for those of you, I think all of you have been handed a DVD set, so you've got something to take back with you. Myself and Mary are going back, as I said, tomorrow, along with the guys who we've, tra who, who we've travelled with. We'll be going back tomorrow, down, back down to Melbourne, and we're having a group down in Melbourne on Saturday. So, um, would you like to give you, give them your love or whatever, or if you wanted to, or what? What? Uh, Can we just thank the group here uh, for organising the venue? Oh yeah, I just want to thank the group of uh, who organised the venue as well, and and also organised the lovely uh, spread out the back and also welcomed us yesterday when we came when we arrived last night thanks so much uh, for doing all that for us yeah. so hopefully we've given you something to think about at least um, <laughs> and uh, and hopefully too um, at some point in the future we'll see you again I'm sure we will at some point can we come to Adelaide next? Yeah, it's all, so yeah, it's all desire, really. Um, no one from Adelaide has expressed a desire for us to come. Me, except. I sent you the email about you. Yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> so um, I'm working on it. I know a couple of people that might be open. And with all this media stuff, a lot of times good things happen as well as bad things. <laughs> so you know. You know. Yeah. It's on again tonight, and it will be on again Friday night. And yeah, they're, they're trying to f find out a litany of my life and then do the normal thing with it, you know. Yeah. Can I just say, AJ, the reason why I came here is because I was driving down to Gore to see my daughter, and I asked God, and I said, God, is this the person that I really need to see? And I got that loving, lovey, warm, Beautiful feeling all over my body, going yeah. through me. Yeah. And then after a while it stopped, and I, then I said, Are you sure? <laughs> 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 it's really nice, but it's okay. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, God's pretty sure <laughs> when we get those motiv so motivations. And, you know. Yeah, it's been lovely, your questions too, by the way. Um, yeah, the questions you've asked have been really good. I feel there's been a lot of questions asked for the benefit of spirits as well. There's been quite a lot of spirits who, who have been here tonight with us and they've wanted to ask quite a lot of questions. And so a lot of your questions have been motivated by their, by their urgings. So that's good as well. Um, I feel it will benefit all of you as a group as well. So, yeah, it's wonderful to meet the majority of you that we have tonight. And... Uh, yeah, that's really good. Anyway, we're uh, going to have to pack up now and get ourselves set. Sorry? Thank you. Thank our crew. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry for our crew, but we'd love to thank you all for doing what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and uh, can I just mention, too, that... Uh, 
There will be a DVD of this presentation if you'd like to hear it again. Um, there will also be a YouTube upload of it at some time in the next few weeks as well. So if you want to see it again or remember what was said or whatever, it will all be on the internet at some point. All right? All right. I just want to shake your hand. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I really do. Thanks.